The State Department and the National Institutes of Health are the latest agencies to triage the damage from a cyber breach that's been going on for months. Experts call those breaches uh, cases of nation-state cyber espionage. Brigadier General Greg Tuhill, U.S. Air Force retired, is president of Appgate Federal Group and former federal chief information security officer. Greg, welcome. Thanks for coming on. I know you're looking at this from the outside in and not from the inside out, but what's your takeaway from the reports that we're seeing about this cyber breach? You know, frankly, I believe, Francis, this is the tip of an iceberg, a really big supply chain uh, uh, attack iceberg as part of a, uh, a nation state campaign. Uh, so we all need to be paying attention to this. And, I, you know, frankly, I don't think that solar winds, fire eye, uh, that they're, they're only the tip of the iceberg out there. The analogy that another security professional gave me over the weekend, Greg, was that this is the hole through which the, uh, the, the floodwaters come into the basement this is not the actual floodwaters itself. Is that an apt analogy, do you think? The, the, and I'm referring to the fire eye solar winds element of this. Yeah, you know, I think it's, uh, it, it's an interesting uh, metaphor uh, of how we uh, try to look at this. But, you know, frankly, as we take a look at our, our strategy and where we are and where we're going, what the adversaries are demonstrating in terms of uh, capabilities, you know, uh, this should be a wake up call that we need to rethink our strategy. We need to rethink cyber deterrence and we need to do things that we know would help in this particular uh, instance, such as uh, accelerate uh, zero trust. We've had paralysis by analysis. It it's time to really get moving on zero trust as a security strategy, not only across federal government, but frankly, in the private sector, defense, industrial base, et cetera. What's your, what's your sense of what happens, maybe not in this specific instance, but uh, broadly, what happens at OMB? What happens in the individual agencies that have had a challenge, that have had a breach when something like this occurs, Greg? What's the chain of events? Well, frankly, Francis, we've got to assume that every department and agency has been breached uh, in, in this case. Uh, so, you know, going in and assuming breach, uh, we are protocols for uh, convening things like the Chief Information Security Council to do a damage assessment, a risk exposure assessment, and, and uh, activities like that. Uh, we don't have enough hunt teams in the U.S. CERT and Cyber Command and NSA combined to go through every department and agency. So the immediate action is to assume that you're breached and then work from there. Uh, but I would have that CISO Council uh, convening uh, on a crisis action team uh, basis uh, to make sure that we have a, a, a good site picture as far as what our risk exposure is, to do a damage assessment. And then for those high value assets that have already been identified uh, by the departments and agencies, I would be uh, assessing them as part of my first uh, hunt team uh, looks. That security professional that I referred to a few moments ago, Greg, told me that her greatest fear is that there will be some kind of widespread accountability, warranted or not, like we saw after the OPM breach in 2015. What's your sense of what accountability, if anything, looks like in the wake of this? Well, you know, from a, a you know, let, let's not punish the victims for being victims. Uh, you know, this requires some mature leadership, but it also requires us to take a, a, a very good look, as I mentioned earlier, into are we in fact on the right course? Uh, are our strategies, are our uh, protections that are currently in place sufficient to meet the current uh, environment that are out there? You know, as a military commander, uh, sure, you know, you take a look and you say, well, did the commander fail uh, when uh, the enemy had a successful attack? Or do you just uh, make the decision, you know, the enemy's pretty good and, uh, you know, you want to live to fight another day? We don't take our commanders out and shoot them every time the enemy attacks. What we do is just we assess whether or not our strategies, our operations, our plans, our tactics, techniques, and procedures are effective, and that's what we need to be doing right now. So that last use of strategy, of the word strategy, was your third in our conversation so far, Greg. Where's our strategy lacking now, do you think, 
and where should it change? How should it change? You know, frankly, I think as we take a look at our strategy, there's been a lot of positives uh, that we have in there. However, uh, we're still leveraging that perimeter defense model that, uh, you know, frankly, military strategists have been using for as long as history has been written. Um, zero trust is uh, gaining acceleration in both public and private sectors. Uh, from a strategy standpoint, I don't think we can wait any further. And particularly as we outsource more and more, as we go into more as a service uh, engagements uh, from a federal government standpoint, uh, zero trust is the only uh, strategic approach that is holding weight. And you know, as we take a look at where we want to be, uh, we need to rethink, and um, for my money, if I were still in office, I'd be pushing hard to implement zero trust everywhere. Quit analyzing it, get out there and uh, implement it. Greg Tuhill, thanks very much for joining me. Great to have you back. Thank you very much, Francis.